Greetings. Welcome to Pan-Africanist Point of View. This week I want to talk about the black elite. Now, we all have some understanding of what the elite are. And every society, every civilization, every nation has its elites. And the elites are generally people who not only control the bulk of the nation's resources, they also are the main influences of the society. They set the agenda of the society, and not just the fashion or cultural agenda, but the economic, political, social agenda of the society. So everyone, whether they're pro or anti-elitism, has to do with the reality that societies and social structures tend to generate class stratifications and at the top of that class stratification is the elite or the bourgeoisie. Now, the problem with the black elite is just as in the European, Asian, Southeast Asian or Indian cultures, the elites set the agenda for the people and then the masses so-called or the working classes tend to be rallied around what the agenda the elite set. And if the agenda that the elite set is too unpopular, then you have social unrest from the masses and you have maybe a social revolution or, or large scale social reform. But the bottom line is, is that the elite must set the agenda or tend to set the agenda in society outside of a revolutionary situation. But the problem with the so-called black elite or the talent tent is they don't set the agenda. The best our elites have ever offered us is to, to pick a particular white agenda to rally us around. So many of our, whitey, our black elites have white sponsorship, i.e. they're not truly elites. There is no black elite. In fact, there is no hierarchy among slaves. The only people who can set an agenda or even establish an elite or even a true class stratification are free people and independent people. And because we've yet to fully secure our freedom, we don't have elites. What we have is what I call house slave or the house slave elite concept where you have an individual who is selected by the dominant culture or by the culture that holds, that held us in captivity and continues to oppress us to this day. They handpick our so-called elites and then our elites are given the responsibility of taking the dominant agenda and making it popular or imposing it on our communities. And then they're given a certain amount of reward and resources that they can dole out to the rest of the black masses. And so we spend all of our time trying to figure out which white agenda that our black leader is going to rally us towards, but never ever taking the time to disconnect and and basically huddle amongst ourselves and determine what our destiny and what our agenda, what our interest is, and how to structure our worlds based on our disposition and our mentality. And if we don't secure freedom, we'll never have a true independent agenda. And when you look at most of the elites, the only thing that separates most of our elite from the rank and file is they have greater consumption capacity meaning that they can buy more shit than the rest of us. They can get more houses, they can get bigger cars, and they can pretty much buy anything that the European is willing to sell to them, manufacture and sell to them, or the Chinese, or other independent people. So we need to, number one, recognize that this has been the task and the trend that the elites have set. Number two, we need to realize that we need to break from this trend and begin to reject, and we need new determinants for what defines our elite. No more is say, hey, this guy is an exceptional athlete or this person is particularly adept and very skilled at functioning and navigating the European economy and is able to garner a lot of money or resources and exposure within the system. So, hey, let's follow him. He seems to know where he's going. We need to determine our elite based on what our interest is. And our first and primary interest is liberation, securing independent resources and gaining control of our lost resources and building our own independent institutions. After that is done, then within those institutions and within that agenda, we can begin to elevate those who best serve our, us collectively and most worthy of serving our interests. So that's what I want to do with today on um, Pan-Africa's Pan-Africanist point of view. I know I want to keep these uh, presentations under five minutes, so maybe I should get uh, less um, meaty topics. 
to deal with. But anyway, the, this week's books will be uh, one of my favorite books that I've read time and time again. And that's uh, Black Power. Oh, let me bring that into focus. Black Power, The Politics of Liberation by the people I consider our elites, Kwame Ture and Charles V. Hampton. So we need power and not power in terms of what's been granted to us within the greater umbrella of uh, white oppression and domination, but we need independent and resilient black power and, and more specifically African power if we really want to have our elites. Again, please uh, check me out on Twitter and Facebook and all the other social networks, and I love to get any level of feedback that, that you might want to offer or criticisms and let's expand and advance this discussion, these ideas, and ultimately our uh, Pan-Africanist liberation. Peace.